Uh, good morning, boys and girls. We are back again. Now, we were talking about the upthrust uh, of forces, and this time we'll be talking about upthrust in gases uh, under still floating and sinking. Now, um, something to remind you how do we find upthrust in terms of uh, calculation? We know that density is equal to mass of volume. Of course, volume shall be mass over density. Then I remember doing uh, the uh, uh, deriving of the formula for getting the upthrust, and eventually we arrive on volume uh, density times gravity. So we know that this one is actually the, an upward force, be it in, 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 in liquids or in gases. But basically, uh, this time we'll be talking about the upthrust in gases. We have seen balloons. We have seen uh, some of the objects uh, floating air, even aeroplanes floating air. But are we able to explain that in terms of uh, uh, in terms of outer? Of course, we are going to see uh, the way forward. Now, um, as you can see from the screen, the outer in gases exper uh, gases experiences a smaller force. The one you are calling the outer, and the outer is actually a kind of a force that is holding uh, objects to harm or to float a uh, bit in, in, liquid, in, in liquids or, or, or in, in gases. We are saying that this is because uh, the gases have very low density. For example, a balloon filled up with the hydrogen or, or helium rises up because of the low density. If you compare, for example, density of air and you compare density of hydrogen or, or helium gas, you realize that the density of helium or hydrogen gas is very, very small. That's why now the object or the balloon will rise up, simply because uh, the air is denser than the, than the, 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 the helium gas or hydrogen gas. That's why the, 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 the balloon will actually float and move up, so that now it can be explained uh, very well. Now, there is a small video to show you. Uh, just look at it carefully. This is uh, practically. In the last chapter, all the rules for buoyancy were stated in terms of fluids rather than liquids. The reason is, is because the rules hold for gases as well as liquids. The physical laws that explain how a blimp stays aloft in the air are the same that explain a fish being aloft in water. Archimedes' principle for air states that an object surrounded by air is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the air displaced. A cubic meter of air at ordinary atmospheric pressure and room temperature has a mass of about 1.2 kilograms. Its weight is about 12 newtons. Any one cubic meter object in air is buoyed up with a force of 12 newtons. If the mass to the object is greater than 1.2 kilograms, it will fall to the ground when released. If the object has a mass less than 1.2 kilograms, it will rise in the air. A gas-filled balloon rises in the air because it's less dense than the surrounding air. Everything is buoyed up with a force equal to the weight of the air it displaces. So what happens to a rubber helium-filled balloon when you let it go? Because gas is compressible and air pressure decreases with height, as the balloon rises it will expand. This causes the balloon's density to decrease. You'd think that the buoyant force would increase, but as the balloon rises, the atmosphere's density decreases too. Eventually, the balloon and atmosphere reach the same density and the balloon floats at a constant altitude until the helium leaks out and it descends back to Earth. In a gas-filled balloon or airship, the weight of the gas is significant. The helium that fills the Goodyear blimp weighs 2,260 pounds. That's over a ton. An air bubble in water also expands as it rises. Like a balloon, the air bubble will expand as it rises and its density decreases. Unlike the balloon in air, the density of water is constant. The buoyant force increases as the bubble rises and its acceleration increases.
now you are able to see from the screen that um, a balloon filled up with hydrogen gas or helium, uh, helium gases, of course, is going to rise. But of course, you have to remember that uh, on the ground, on the ground, as you have seen, there is a because of the heat. This is the ozone, you can say the ozone layer, then this is the ground. Because of other substances, uh, vehicles, trees and everything, the density of the air is going to vary. As you move up, of course, density is going to be different. That's why now, as the density is varying, helium density is constant. So if the density is varying on the ground, as, as you go up, of course, that's why now the balloon is able to do it, is able to, to rise. At the same time, if you look at a bubble, bubble water, if let's say you are in a swimming pool, for example, then a bubble water is released from the ground. Remember, this is, a, a, this is water, it has a specific density. Density is not varying. So if this is not varying, it means it's constant. So if this is constant, it means that, of course, there is a decrease in pressure. We know very well that pressure is equal to hydrogravity in liquid. So that now, as the, as the height is reducing, the pressure on it is what? It, it, it's also reducing. So that's why the bubble, as it's rising up, is actually budging into a bigger, bigger, it's increasing in terms of volume. So that now, at this point, let's say there is a two points, or three points in that case, so we have the uh, uh, point A, Let's say uh, there is a point A at the bottom, point B at the middle, then a point C uh, almost on the surface of the, of the swimming pool. You realize that the volume of this water drop, or, uh, or I mean a gas drop, at point A compared with B is uh, very small. Now if you go to C, because of the pressure, we are saying that as you move up, the pressure is reducing as a result of the decrease in what? In height. Remember, we are saying that density in, of the water is constant. So that's why now the pressure is also reducing and then of course the volume is increasing. Volume is increasing because now the pressure being exerted on the balloon is actually, is actually decreasing. That's why the volume will actually, will actually increase. Now if you look at this, these are balloon kind of, they are placed there inside. You can clearly see that the weight is actually greater than the atlas. The weight is greater than that. That's why you can see. Look at the shape of that of that uh, bubble. You can see that, of course, it is a uh, compared to the other one. Look at this. If you look at this now, the helium or hydrogen gas, if you compare with that one, you are saying that the abstract force is actually greater than the weight. If you compare with the other one, you can see there is a very, very clear uh, difference. This one is almost a circular, but the other one is a kind of a, a, a sphere. So that now we are saying that under this one, when the helium or hydrogen gas has been filled here, the upthrust is greater than the weight. And unlike the other one, we are, we are saying that the weight is greater than the upthrust. As we move forward, as we move forward, we go to what we call the law of rotation. I uh, remember the other day I showed you on uh, some of the um, uh, floating objects. Uh, I show you a ferry uh, just floating, moving on water in the ocean. Of course, we need to explain how come. And of course, if this thing is moving at the same time, it's carrying very good, uh, very good man. But of course, it's able to float. We are going to describe a very simple uh, experiment here. I'll describe by the apparatus. Apparatus, I have them here. One, I'm having what I'm calling a machine cylinder, which is here. You can clearly see from the diagram. This is a machine cylinder. It is this 100 ml, which is equivalent to 100 cubic centimeters. I have uh, what you call a test tube. This one here, a test tube, which is here. I have also uh, a water right here. I have sand, small sand. Then this one is a spatula. Then uh, from there, I also have what you call the pan balance. This one for measuring for measuring mass, which of course you can convert into 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 weight. We know that if you have all the apparatus, the procedure is very clear. Now, we need to understand the procedure, and then from the procedure we go one step to other, and of course we'll be able to explain what we need. In this case, we consider the floating object uh, and weight of the fluid displaced in comparison with the weight of object and that of the fluid displaced. Now, as you can see clearly, the procedure. I have filled the machine cylinder. I have machine cylinder, I have water, I'm going to fill this up to around 50. I'm going to fill this up to 50, somewhere there. Okay, next one, record the reading. I can record the reading, this is a 50 cubic centimeters. 
So I can call V1, this is a 50 cubic centimeter, which is a, this is a ml. Of course, you know that one ml is the same as one cubic centimeter. So I have it. Then, uh, after recording, place a clean dry test tube into the beaker. So I'm having the test tube is here, so I'm going to place it empty without a place putting anything. So I have it here. So once I have it, you can clearly see that this thing is floating. The test tube is floating in the water. You can clearly see that from there. Of course, you can actually even make a reading. So you go to uh, step three and add some sand in it so that it floats upright. So I'm going to add slowly. This is our sand. So I'm going to have, I add sand into the test tube. Just a small pieces. Make sure the water does not enter the test tube. So just be careful. Okay. We are almost, almost there. You can clearly see that the test tube is almost uh, upright inside the mesh and cylinder, which is having uh, some water. Okay. Clearly see exactly. Okay, so we have that floating upright in the mesh cylinder, which is adding some water. Now we need to make a uh, ready. Place a dry test tube into the beaker, add some sand in so that it floats upright. And then from there we are saying that record the new uh, level of the liquid and determine the volume of the displaced water. Now we need to record this. Uh, when we make the reading, uh, this one is about. Seventy cubic centimeters. So I call this V two. Uh, v two. This is seventy cubic centimeters. Now, determine after recording the uh, the second volume. Determine the volume of the displaced water. How do you determine the volume of displaced water? Initially, V one was fifty. Just before you place the uh, the test tube, plus its content. Of course, it has moved to seventy. So that now we can say the volume of the displaced water is actually V2 minus V1, which is equivalent to 70 minus 50. So uh, this one is giving me 20 cubic water, centimeters. Calculate the weight of the displaced water. Now I'll go back to uh, density is equal to mass or volume. How do you determine weight? We know that weight is equivalent to mass times gravity, because everyone knows that. So we are saying that, of course, if we have the weight is equal to mass uh, times gravity, this one is volume. This one is volume, these are pure water. Of course, we know that density of pure water is one gram per cubic centimeter. So if we have, in this case, our uh, one cubic centimeters is equivalent, density of water is equivalent to mass over volume. But of course, we know the volume. Volume is 20 cubic centimeters. So what can I do? We are going to say one, cubic, one gram per cubic centimeters is equivalent to mass divided by volume, which is a 20 cubic centimeters. The only unknown part is uh, mass. So we are going to say mass is equivalent to 1 times 20, which is going to give us 20 grams. But of course, we are not looking for mass. We are saying uh, measure its weight. Determine the volume of the displaced water, then measure its weight, dry and up its content. Now, we need, you see from here, we are able to determine the mass, 20 grams. From the mass, we are able now to find the weight. How do we find weight? We are saying that weight is equal to mg. But remember, when you are dealing with weight, everything must be in terms of a kilogram because the SI unit of weight is newton. So you need to convert this one into a kg, you divide by a thousand. So when you divide by a thousand, this one is going to give you 0 0.02. 0 0.02, that is a, that, then 1, 2. 0 0.02, and this one is going to be a kgs. Now, from here, we can now determine the what? The weight. Because we already, have, we already have the mass, so it's going to be mass 0 0.02 times force of gravity, which is 10, eventually it's going to give us 0 .0, uh, 0 0.2 Newton. This one becomes the weight of that displaced water. If you go back uh, down there, of course you are saying that add some sand in so that it flows uprightly, which you have done. Record the new level of the liquid, which you have done. Determine the volume of displaced water, which you have done. Now, after determining the weight of the displaced water, 
at the same time measure it when it dry and the it content now i'm going to remove the test tube from here then i need to measure its mass i need to measure its mass need to remove uh, carefully This is 19.8. My value is 19.8 grams. 19.8 grams, that is uh, the mass of the test tube plus the sand inside. Calculate the weight of the displaced water. We have already done that. The weight of the displaced water is 0 0.2. The mass of uh, the measure its weight, dry and its content. We have done that, it's giving us a 19.8 grams. So I have the, uh, the mass which is a 19.8 grams. Of course, this is mass. We need to convert in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, kgs. Then from there, we determine the weight. So that now we have weight is equals to mg. Of course, this one we have to convert into kilograms. That is a 19.8. We divide by 1,000. If we divide by 1,000, we are getting 0 0.0198. Then, of course, this is, this is kg. This is kg, 0 0.0198. So that now, when now you convert this one into uh, into a newton, we multiply by we multiply by ten. So that now we have it. So that now we are going to have 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.0 uh, 198. We multiply by ten, and then we have 0 0.198. Now this is the weight of the contents of the glass. I mean of the test tube and the sun. So the weight which you have done. So we have weight one, which is a 0 